Blevins Nation Entertainment and BlevinsNation.com, the place to go for all the best in rock and roll music, new rock, and podcast. So sit back, hold tight, and open up your ears. The revolution is here. Now here's your host, Chris. Hi right, everybody, this is Chris with Blevins Nation, and we are talking with two guys from Spirit Mechanics, and we will get to what that is here in a moment, and it's Brian and Steven, is that right? Yeah. yeah. All right, very cool. So, uh, spirit mechanics. Um, I've heard a little bit about it from my wife. To me, what it is, is uh, you go in and cleanse after somebody's done a um, spook investigation or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's not wrong. You know, except it's the non corporeal spooks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Very cool. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a skeptic, but I'm not. I'm very open-minded, but I just don't. I don't know. Right. I've, you know, I've, uh, my wife sees stuff all the time. Right. And I'm like, I don't see anything. That's fine. But I have felt while I was getting dressed one day, sitting on the bed, somebody sat down right beside me. And you know how it, you can tell when that... Oh, the, the, the goosebumps. The oh, yeah, like, yeah, exactly, you know. <laughs> and I just contributed it to my mom, you know, because she passed, God, 23, 24 years ago. Um, or my brother, he passed a year after her, so, I mean, you know. But uh, I... It doesn't scare me, you know. So I mean, I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the idea is you should you should always have a healthy respect, but never fear what's going on. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, with us, I mean, that's the reason why we have people who are investigators do it before we go in. Right. Because I don't I believe that you have you know that you know yeah you have your experiences, but I haven't seen it, so I can't sit here and say one way or the other. We're just as skeptical as the next person. We, okay. We know what we can do. We know what we can see, but we need proof. Okay. I mean, we, the majority of the time, we go through uh, an entire process before we actually put quote unquote boots on the ground. So there'll be the preliminary investigation, like with uh, with Amy, uh, Amy Allen, mm-hmm. their thing. Or uh, another investigative team would call us to, uh, you know, after the fact. So they go in first, and they, you know, well, this is what we found. Or if it goes the other way, where the family contacts us, that kid is really distracting. (laughs) Wow. Somebody's mad. I know, right? Just leave it in. Just leave it in. That, that is how you get right. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Not on the lines of what we're talking about, but that is true. <laughs> Hell yeah, so people what, will get a crack what, what, out of that. Yeah, what was I at? <laughs> I don't even damn remember. We were talking about going in. Uh, going in dry, I mean, right. <laughs> Anyway, we don't go in until the investigative team goes in first. They present us with the evidence they get. Okay. And then um, we will do our questions. We'll ask uh, a series of questions because, again, we need to know their experiences along with the evidence to kind of give a proper diagnosis. Because different things are going to present with different symptoms. Okay. Not everything is what, you know, the typical thought. Like, oh, well, there's there's some craziness going on in my house. It's obviously a demon. Yeah. Uh, well, no. Gun, head, pull trigger. No, it's not. No, it's not a demon. <laughs> right, you right. Know, the it, the I, amount of time we've, we've gotten phone calls, panicked 
phone calls. There's a demon in my house. Well, are you having these symptoms? No. It's not. You know, and then, well, even the ones that we entertain, it's like, well, okay, possibly. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll go in and we still do a on-site investigation before we do any work at all. And uh, the idea is we try to find a logical solution first before we do anything spiritual at all. Right. And it's a good thing we do. We've, we've had cases where we've gone in and it was literally squirrels in the attic. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that. There's, there's demons, there's demons like scratching, it's scratching the ceiling and it's freaking me out. We go up there and it's literally a squirrel's nest. It smells like piss. Mm -hmm. Softball size hole in the roof that yep. is visible to me. And for those listening, I'm visually impaired. He's freaking blind. <laughs> so, you know, it's visible to me in, you know, nest mm -hmm. and insulation in the attic. And it's, it's like, no, 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 you, you don't have demons. That's mm -hmm. not what this is. You need to have your landlord come out and fix your roof. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I contribute that to... It's always been the other side or whatever you want to call it, the paranormal or the uh, just anything in that realm has been deemed bad mm -hmm. right you know oh, for years and years i mean i guess even back in the 18th century who knows i mean as far as you can remember mm -hmm. um but also my first remembrance of anything similar to this like ghost hunting or any kind of stuff like that was uh mtv started doing a thing where they put people in a room oh, yeah. at a prison you remember that yeah. now it yeah. may have started before, i'm sure it started before that but televised mm -hmm. you know yeah. um yeah. was uh was the first thing I saw. Now, did, and that was just to made to scare the crap out of people. And that, of course, scared America for that kind of stuff. Of course, it intrigued people, too. When did what y'all do start? Has everybody always used it? Is this something you have to use? I mean, as far as going in and cleansing or, um, because actually, Stephen is a, um, you're an ordained minister, right? Yes. Okay, and um, a legal, not antichrist. What's the crap that damn thing? <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Yeah. Well, not, 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 I officially recognized by the church. I, I'm, right, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm not uh, Catholically trained. Right, right. So technically, I can't use the title of exorcist. I'm, okay. I'm a demonologist. Demonologist, okay, okay. Uh, Which I, you know what, that sounds better anyway. Right. <laughs> um, only those trained in Catholic right and approved by the Vatican can officially, truly call themselves a exorcist. Okay. But um, for all intents and purposes, you know, when you're trying to explain what you do, it's easier to go. I'm an exorcist than it is to go I'm a I mean, demonologist. Yeah, because, I mean, it may sound cooler, but it's, that can throw people. Oh, right. You know, they go, oh my God, demon, what, what's he talking about? Right. That's and, all they hear. And the biggest thing, too, is, you know, it, media, movies, TV, Yes. you know, it's hyper-sensationalized, but even just the word exorcist. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, everybody can relate to it, whereas demonologist is kind of a foreign term to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the first it's, time I had actually heard it. So it's really, it's actually really niche. I mean, you if you're running in the, these, you know, these circles like we do, as far as like doing metaphysical events or paranormal events, you'll hear the term a lot. But you know, outside of it, you, you don't really hear that much. I mean, I didn't know until um, probably late early two thousands. I didn't know anything about it. So like two thousand three, two thousand four. Okay. But, um, I mean, as far as, like, what I've been doing, um, my first experience of paranormal was a cleansing. And I was six, six years old, actually. And I was, um, I, I tell the story a lot, but it's, it's a, I was a kid, and I had a flashlight, and I was afraid of the dark, you know, mm -hmm. classic kid stuff. Yep. So my mom would give me a flashlight. That way I can look and see that there's nothing in the dark. 
that uh, isn't there in life. So that night it was pretty bad as far as like me being scared. And uh, she's like, "All right, you can sleep in the bed with me. Just get in the back. We had a water bed, like a uh, full size water bed." I know, right? It, uh, that's back that, the day. that long ago. Yeah. So. I kept getting this weird feeling, and um, I would sign the flashlight around the room trying to find it, and it kept like it was getting, cl- kept feeling like it was getting closer, and um, and it kept going and kept going. It probably went for about 15, 20 minutes. But in my mind, as a kid, you know, it's 30 minutes now or two hours. This was going on, but it wasn't that long. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she's out of a dead sleep, starts shaking, and screaming like something's attacking her, and. I go, you know, you're in a water bed. So <laughs> you're shaking and screaming and everything like that. It's like super magnified. The only thing I knew to do was to get on the railing of the bed, which I was a little kid, so I could fit. Mm-hmm. Get on the railing of the bed, bury my head into the wall, put the pillow over the back of my head, and start praying. Because I had, my uncle just taught me how to pray. Mm-hmm. Uh, she stopped. I went to sleep. We moved out of that house the next day. So that's when, that was my first experience. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I've never had anything like that happen. Um, Mandy has. And, uh, you know, I've heard of other people. But, you know, as far as ghost hunting, have y'all, do you, have y'all done ghost hunting before? Oh, yeah. Or just, okay. <clears throat> okay. I didn't he's, know if you... He's certified as a ghost hunter. I'm not. Okay. I'm I didn't know if y'all did that or just went in after, you know... We do it for fun. Okay. <laughs> we do that for fun. Okay. It, that's that's literally a day off for us. You know, we're, we're not being called in to remove it. We're just being there to see it. You know, it's kind of okay. like going to the zoo. Instead okay. Instead of being animal control. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I've seen... I've seen taps. I've seen, um, gosh, a lot of different ones on TV and stuff. And um, even Josh Gates, you know, the stuff that he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some things are believable. Mm-hmm. Some things are not. Some th- I, love, I love the ones that go in and want to debunk it mm-hmm. rather than egg it on, okay. you oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. There's one that goes in and just some guy, I forget what the – four or five guys, and I don't know the name of it, but they, I think they plant, plant stuff to be done. That's just my opinion. I know, right? We know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, a, it's very agitating. Yes. It, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's ridiculous. That's just. It, it's, it's for TV. It, oh, yeah, I mean, of course. We, there, are, there are a lot of people who are legitimate in the field, mm-hmm. and, and they really are. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of respect for these individuals who literally get on television and go, hey, we didn't get a thing here. Right. Or this evidence can be debunked by this. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are a lot of people that have this tendency to really get lost in the TV personality side of it as opposed to the legitimate evidence side of it. Right. right. And it, it just becomes a train wreck after that. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why a lot of people just don't take this kind of stuff seriously. They, right. they don't take the field seriously. Now, let me ask you all a question, because I've seen this even on TAPS and others. Uh-huh. When they're recording and got their recorders out and stuff, and they're filming it and all that good stuff, well, they hear something. I don't hear it yet. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, during the... Reveal, I guess is what it's called, what yeah. they used. Um, you would hear something, and I'd be like, well, I didn't hear that in the damn, mm-hmm. when they were actually doing it. <clears throat> Do they not hear it all the time, and it just comes, you only pick it up on the digital EMF recorder? Yes. That, okay, that's what I was wondering. Yes, that is actually true. Okay. Um, so they don't find it till they actually go back and. Right. What did you also got to think, too, during, like, um, Tap specifically, or uh, the Ghost Hunters TV show, mm-hmm. they'll do two investigations during that night. They'll do two. Yeah. They'll do their legitimate investigation, which is not camera. They're not on camera. Oh, okay. And they'll do the one for TV, which is the drama that oh. they, pulls people in. Yeah. Uh, they've actually said that they've, that's something that they've came out. And we do two investigations. One is for our evidence to gather the actual evidence, and the other right. one's for the 
entertaining. Because you gotta, you gotta gotcha. Be, you gotta gotcha. be entertaining in order to have people to well, you know, watch the show. Otherwise, you're gonna be doing actual investigations for the shit. It, it is nobody I would bet. watch a legitimate investigation. Nobody. Yeah. It, it would it would just crash ratings immediately. You know, I, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. Um because the legitimate ones will actually do that. So that, you know, okay, we gotta pay the bills, but once the bills are paid, here's what we actually came here for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, I mean, now that I think about it, you got a big camera crew, you got this and that, 20 people in one room and you don't see but two. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of hard for, if I was a spirit, mm-hmm. to want to come out. Right. Yeah, I guess. That's you know. That would be, you know, the, it's, most of the time what they're supposed to do is two no more than three. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's normal practice in any criminal investigation. Oh, okay. okay. If, you, if you do any more than that, you're going to get it ridiculous amount of noise pollution, cross-contamination of the evidence. Mm-hmm. It just starts to really affect things. Yeah. When you get yeah. to that point, like uh, you were talking about EVPs or the voice recorders. Yeah. They, uh, when you're starting to try to do those types of things, if you have more than two people in the place and there's a conversation in another room oh, and yeah. don't hear it, that but recorder, the recorder hears it, yeah. oh my gosh, they're having a whole conversation over there. And, and that's seriously the thing. Usually, you know, especially on the ones, we're, we won't name names, but especially on the ones who are not exactly uh, on, up and up. Yes. That's literally what that is. Okay. You know, it's garbage recordings and them going, oh, well, we got an EVP off of this. Mm-hmm. But it's not a legitimate EVP. Well, I know that because I, I live in the, um, what is it, a uh, townhome. Yeah. And in my basement is where I do my recordings and stuff. Yeah, so I got wood here, cement walls, and there's a little space of wood. Mm -hmm. So I could hear dogs from three townhomes down barking, coming through my... I couldn't hear them while I was doing my recording, but on that mic... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You know, so uh, I I can imagine what you would pick up, Um, you know, so... (laughs) Especially if you're in a town doing it, yeah. you know, because uh, oh, yeah. in a building. <clears throat> I mean, it was, uh, we recently did one at uh, the Ross, Ross, Yeah, the Ross Opera House. And oh, uh, just, the, just the street noise. Yeah. You know, we had to wait in between cars. We had to wait in between, you know, people walking outside, and, you know, conversating and, and doing their thing before we could do any form of EVP session because it was just picking up everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, just think of the power lines outside, you know, the, um, gosh, the uh, where the red lights are and yeah. stuff. I mean, you could pick up all kind of stuff, you know, because when my phone is near my equipment, exactly, and that comes through on my recording, you know, so uh, it's... Uh, that's wild. But, uh, so tell me, walk me through a kind of a, what you, what you do when you go to a place. Just, uh, you know. The first thing we do when we get there is pull up, obviously, in the car. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to give you a visual here. Yeah, we, pull right. up, we pull up in the car and we sit there for about 10 minutes in the car. No joke, this is legitimate. And, and this, this is honest process. We okay. sit there for 10 minutes in the car. And wait for them to walk out of the house. And then we stand outside of the car and smoke a cigarette or, uh, you know, kind of pace, talk amongst ourselves for a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. And that's also for a reason. Okay. Now, when you say they come out, the owners? Yes. Okay. I thought you meant the spirits. No, <laughs> we're not coming to you. You come to us. Okay. <laughs> I just no, wanted to make sure, you know. <laughs> Um, most of the time they're already expecting us to be there anyway. Mm-hmm. We usually give them the ETA about what time we're going to be there, so they know it's us anyway, so it's not like it's a, it's a mystery that, oh, there's this strange car with Kentucky plates. Right. The big thing is is that it when we're sitting in the car, most of the time when the people know that we're coming, if there is legitimate spiritual activity, that knows we're coming as well. Okay. 
so the reason why we sit in the car is literally a you're gonna wait you're gonna you're gonna be patient you're gonna wait it's an automatic without being uh, a provoking ass it, it's literally maintaining a sense of a dominance yeah that you're in control right is that you what you're saying okay on us okay we're here for you but you're going to be patient and then when we get out of the car and we're smoking this is usually when the clients come out what we're looking for is <clears throat> pardon me, a shift in their demeanor the way okay. that they respond to us being there mm -hmm. The farther away they get from their house, how do they feel? How do they change? How does their voice change pitch? How, you know, how do their mannerisms change? You know, these kinds of things. How open are they? Okay, now that we've gotten through that, as we get back to the house, because at this point we're walking with them, how are they acting as they get closer to it? Okay. So there's a lot of... I wish I could bring my doctor to my house and do that. Then he would see what I actually go through. Okay. No, I'm just well, during that, you'd see during this thing, yeah, we're sensitives and we, you know, we report a lot on intuition and stuff like that. But you know, we have to work on some physical evidence too. So we do a little bit of body language reading during that period of time, especially during that period of time, um, to see how they're acting as far as like. If it's a questionable of a possession case, they're definitely going to be walking different than a normal person would be walking. They would be carrying themselves in a different manner. Right. They're, it, they're, it's almost like a shambling. It's, it's really well, it's an anxiousness. Mm, yeah. Kind of, is that what you're yeah, saying? You know, very, mm -hmm. very, very fidgety. Yeah. Okay. It's extremely fidgety. Um, We've seen it where we've actually hit town. We we didn't even get to the house, and we get a phone call. It started. I don't know what what happened. Well, we just got into town. So there was one that uh, almost had to be hospitalized for heart attack symptoms. Wow! Just panic attack, line. huh? Yeah, we hit the county line, and we whatever get, it was, knew we were coming. Yeah. Wow. We, we get text messages. This is what's going on. Okay, if we get if we get any closer and it starts to get worse you can call an ambulance and we got there and suddenly they went from we're about ready to call 911 to everything's fine oh is it hmm. cool. <laughs> you know I bet. have y'all ever had to be called back yes yeah okay Okay. Um, that, that's actually that same one we were just talking about. We went back twice. Okay. Um, but it, it, most of the time, our uh, most of our bigger is it their head playing tricks uh, on in them. In some cases, it can be. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of what we do is treatment based. Okay. Right? So the process starts when we make initial contact. The process ends well after we've showed up at the house. Our aftercare is ridiculous. We keep, okay. we keep in touch with clients for years. And just to make sure that, because it's just like being an addict, you will, re there will be a time that you'll relapse. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you're, it's an addictive behavior to have something that is there to fill that void of, oh well, nine times out of 10 it's a trauma. It's just yeah. like drugs. Um, so there's a there's a particular trauma and there's this entity that is trying to fill that void. So when it's taken away, there's nothing there to fill it. Okay. So they have a tendency to call for it back. Even though we've done everything that we can do to alleviate the situation or get rid of you know, mm -hmm. the thing that is causing the situation, they can still call it back. Think of it like That's what uh, I was thinking, okay. Yeah, think of it similar to a uh, and, and this might be a little bit uh, of a trigger subject for some listening, but think of it like an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. You are physically, emotionally abused for so many years, and then all of a sudden it stops. Well, typically what happens, you start missing that person. Even though mm -hmm. it was such a damaging situation, yes. you start missing that person, 
and then you start texting, calling that person, you check on them, and then all of a sudden, it's right back to where it was. Hmm. And it, it's literally that kind of thing when it comes to uh, severe attachments or yeah. form of possession. I can imagine. So, um, okay. I got, you know, when I was growing up, we used to go visit uh, family. I'm from Mississippi, but we used to go, we had family in Virginia. And there was an old, dark, dark road, big fields with grown up stuff and house out there that, you know, was always told if you go by, you see at night, you see some old, somebody up in the, window oh, you love, I love yeah you know a you know a, you see the headless horseman you see this and that and blah 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 well I, they would always take us by there and of course being told this your mind is your worst enemy and that's why i'm a little skeptic about some things you know because i would look up and yes i would see it because everybody else saw it you know I saw the yeah I saw the headless horseman. Not really, but you know what I mean. Um, and I mean the hair, everything. So why is it not like that with everything? I mean, you sh- I don't know. I'm not trying to sound like a skeptic, but I mean, you know, it's like I can scare myself worse than anybody. Believe it so much that you see it. Okay. Uh, think of it. Pareidolia works, you know, for negative things, but it also works for positive things. Okay. So, you know, you've, you've seen the sensation of seeing, you know, the Virgin Mary in everything, right. including things like grilled cheese sandwiches and stuff like that. And that's a form of pareidolia. Okay. You want to see such a quote-unquote miracle so badly. That you and your brain intentionally tries to piece it together in other places. Okay. Um, so people will see things in windows like coke racks or, or lamps or mm-hmm. you know, things of that nature. That's the reason why that pile of clothes in your bedroom, and when the lights are on, it's just a pile of clothes. When the lights are off, there's somebody standing there. Yeah. Every single time. Because your brain is literally trying. In the to make woods, sense. you hear a little crack mm-hmm. yeah. and then the next thing you know it's Bigfoot or it's it's this or it's that somebody's standing you see that somebody's standing behind that tree yeah. you know you can see the silhouette of no you don't but so I mean how do you know for sure you know what I mean right it's the uh, we go through the entire process as far as like symptoms we don't just go based on uh, there's certain things that will have certain smells Okay. Okay. And they're common. They're common things. So, you know, most, some people smell rotten eggs. Some people smell trash. Cheese. Rotted meat. Rotted meat. Hmm. These are common things in um, what we're doing our, our preliminary questions. That's a question that always gets asked. What do you smell? Well, I don't really smell anything. Okay. Well, I smell perfume or cigar. Okay. Well, that tells me that it's a human spirit. It's a human spirit. Whereas okay. Whereas the rotten eggs, or especially things like uh, really strong astringent cleaners, like uh, like never, chlorine. Yeah, if they haven't used bleach, or there's an allergy, or they're, you know, it's been forever since they've actually touched bleach, but they smell chlorine for no reason. That's that's a, a warning sign for us. Yeah. Um, what kind of warning sign? What do you mean? Usually, more of the darker entities present with such strong smells. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so it's the full sense and the full sensation. You're going to be hypersensitive anyway. So and you're not going to think about smells. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that you don't think about. You think about right. the sight. You think right. about what you're feeling and what you're hearing. But, all right, any weird smells? That's exactly how I'll say it, too. Any weird smells? But now that you mention it, because all of a sudden their brain clicks because they don't think about it. Yeah. It's the same thing like asking about personal habits. You know, have you picked up any strange habits that you typically, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't see yourself doing? And, you know, most of the time, well, no, not really, but you'll get that one 
Well, I, I started doing, picking at my nails. Or I started, you know, kind of wiggling my teeth back and forth. Mm -hmm. Or I started kind of plucking at my hair. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's, you know, that's normal tick stuff. But if right. it's out of the ordinary, it's out of the ordinary. Or um, eating habits. Has you, your diet changed suddenly? Mm -hmm. You know, they go from eating a normal diet to only eating rare steak. That's, uh, that's yeah. a pretty big warning sign. That's a pretty us. warning sign. Um, or if they go from eating a stable diet uh, to eating garbage. Or if they go from um, like a full vegetarian into I'm eating everything. You know, extreme changes. Yeah, yeah. And usually they're abrupt. Now, how come you uh, it may have? I, I've seen lots of Ghost Hunter shows and stuff how come you don't hear a lot of those questions on those because they're there to get evidence they're not there to and is and right. like you said quote unquote the tv thing yeah. you yeah. know well that, hmm. they're not there to get rid of anything they're there to prove that it's there got you they're got you the science, okay the science end of it think of it like uh if we're going through a process you can equate it to the medical industry Mm -hmm. So you go and see a general practitioner, this would be your, your typical uh, paranormal investigation. You go see a general practitioner to have them list out your symptoms. These are the things that could be wrong. Right. But you go see a specialist to take care of those symptoms. Okay. And that's kind of the progression. You don't want your general practitioner to do your surgery because they don't know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words... The ghost hunters get all the fame and glory, and y'all do the cleanup. You won't hear us say that. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, to be honest, but y'all do the dirty work. Well, not, I don't mean, you know what I mean. I mean, it's. <laughs> yeah, we walk in, and we wear my black flag ends, and wear black clothes, and pull the gun out. You know, we, we are the wet team. That's right. Yeah. No, you hear that? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, <wouldn't. laughs> just walk up behind the spirit, you know, you know just, shiv it. just shiv it. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, but truthfully, without at least the legitimate paranormal teams, without mm -hmm. their evidence, it makes what we do difficult. Oh, I bet. Because then we have to differentiate between what is a mental issue and what is a paranormal issue. With proper evidence, we can go in and go, okay, they have evidence that this is actually happening in their home. Mm -hmm. This is a legitimate thing. Because, um, I mean, it's so easy to sit there because they run, rerun after rerun of this stuff. You can literally keep it on, a, like, the Travel Channel and watch nothing but paranormal shows. <laughs> <laughs> all day, every day, and you have no idea how many people come to us. I've got something in my house. I, I figured you guys could come out, and then all of a sudden it's, I watch all these shows. Every single time. And it's on when we walk in the door. Oh, yeah. Do you guys know this person? Is this, is, is this real? Is that real? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What's actually going on in your house? Oh, well, this one on this show said that this was happening, and, and because of that, <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 <laughs> you know, well, it, it, it's, it's a give and take, mm -hmm. you know, it, it honestly is, it's a give and take, you know, we, we work with Amy, you know, we were friends with uh, a couple of other fairly big names, at least mm -hmm. as far as paranormal investigation teams. And we can respect these people because they legitimately go in and they're like, hey, here's the thing. And when they come to us and they're like, hey, here's the thing, mm -hmm. we can go, cool, let's go take care of the thing. Yeah. It, it really helps our pro I mean, we've had, we had one who contacted us. Didn't have no, they didn't have any evidence. And we're like, okay, that's cool. And the process ended up, as far as us doing a diagnosis, we didn't even go to the client, to this particular client's place. Mm -hmm. But it ended up, we had to call a psychiatrist and be like, they need help more than uh, your help than they need our help. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 
one of those situations where we have to really differentiate between mental illness versus paranormal activity. Because honestly, you hear voices, you know, it could be schizophrenia, it could be uh, multiple personality disorder, split personality disorder. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be any number of mental conditions. Right. So that is why we have the evidence first. That way we can rule that out completely. All right, well, they have the evidence. So it's not schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. They're not having hallucinations. Right. But there are some uh, environmental things that we look at, too. Absolutely. Um, you know, everybody's heard of EMF. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Uh, when there's overexposure, it changes from EMF to EMR. Uh, what electromagnetic frequencies actually are is a form of radiation. So when you start to actually be around more than what you should, oh. you are technically, technically... Uh, feeding your body a lot of <laughs> radioactive waves, it can start to affect you. You can hallucinate from it. Your body can actually start to fall apart from it. Uh, migraines, uh, uh, clouded judgment, uh, irritability, muscle deterioration, really? insomnia is a huge one, extreme paranoia and pareidolia. You know, you, you get all these things. It actually, we had a case um, local, yeah, one one in town, and uh, <laughs> phew. the not the it was the original wiring in the building. The building was built in the '60s. It had uh, the original box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had the original box in it, so it was a fused box. Mm -hmm. It was like 1969 that this place was built. Yeah. Um, in the same room, they had a. Wall unit air conditioner. Uh, it, they had the wall unit. They had two window units. Mm -hmm. They had a space heater. Oh, they, they had an old school uh, knob turn TV. Um, and the back room was uh, probably the original hot water heater. So the amount of, we went in and you could feel the weight of, it was like, holy crap. We brought out the uh, EMF detector just we to make sure. We stood in the middle, in the middle, where nothing was around us. We stood in the middle of this person's, uh, well, what was supposed to be their dining room. Mm -hmm. And it picked in the middle of their house with nothing around. No appliances mm -hmm. or anything around. And we, we get to looking. So here's, here's the fuse box. Not a breaker box. Here's the fuse box. On the other side of the fuse box is a wall, right? Mm -hmm. She's underneath of it. That's where her bed is and, and where she sleeps all night. Wow. And when we say wall, we're using that term very loosely. It's a sheet of drywall that yeah. separates the room. God. So hmm. we tried to, she's like, well, I've got a bunch of evidence. I've got a bunch of evidence. I'm like, okay, cool. So I review the evidence. I'm, they're right there watching too. I have headphones in and I'm listening. She's like, well, it said it wanted to kill me. And I'm like, no, that would be your roommate watching YouTube because it was Spanish. Well, before he said it was Spanish, you know, it's, <laughs> that's, your, that's your roommate watching YouTube. And, she, and she's like, well, you can't, you can't say that. It's in a language that I don't understand. And then he literally, honey, he's sitting there on his phone and he is in shock. On his phone, full blast, listening to Spanish YouTube. <laughs> because wow. he's Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm listening, and I'm going, yep, that's definitely Spanish. Well, what about this one? What about this one? She pulls out her phone, and it was a car passing. and Because she lived next to, it was off Broadway. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the, one of the busiest. Well, we, we, we all know that. You know, like, we're around here, but <laughs> it's, it's, you know, the main drag. So it, uh, I'm like, no, honey, that that's a car mm -hmm. passing. Well, what about this? What about this? No, honey, that's another car passing. <laughs> oh, she she got so mad at it. It was it was almost to the point to where we we were, she was gonna kick us out. So yeah. we were like, okay. Some people just it seems like some people just want to be. It, possessed or not possessed but you know what I mean well, I'll just, actually you, you'd be surprised you know? there's a lot of people 
we actually deal with a lot of people who are like, uh, you know, we want to have an experience. We, you know, we want we want to be possessed. We want our house to have these kinds of issues. And it's like, why would you ever want that? Yeah. Because people don't really understand what happens to your body and your mind when you are fully possessed. Actually possessed. Not, yeah. Not your brain believing that you are, mm-hmm. but actually are. It's absolutely horrifying, the things that can happen to you. And this is everything from complete organ failure to brain tissue deterioration. Mm-hmm. I've seen people you know, lose, you know, years. Like, one minute, years. one minute they're fine, everything, you know, they remember everything. Well, I remember getting this thing from my mom and blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, you know, personalities shift because of what we were about to start doing. Until the end of the process, they are nine years old. They have no idea who their girlfriend is who is sitting right beside them. Hmm. And looking wondering, for mommy. and looking for mommy. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. And they go, oh, crap. <laughs> when, you know, like five minutes before, their vital signs tank out. No pulse. They're, you know, their their lips are turning blue. But they're still talking. Hmm. Full on. Wow. You know, that, that reminds me of something, you know, especially y'all talking about the EMF and stuff and turning into an EMR. Where we live is two sets of townhomes and different rows, and then right through the middle of it is an industrial oh, dude. Um, power lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're, me and Mandy go out walking the dog. And I went to rub her on the back of the neck, and her skin vibrated. Yeah. yeah. And I wigged. Oh, and yeah, I man. kept reaching out to touch her, and it was like. Brrr. And she does it to this day. Sometimes it's worse. I even. She even rubbed on my skin and it did the same thing. I'm like, that is killing us. We got to get the hell away from here. It, it's, uh, it can cause a lot of problems. It really can. And that's, it's wild, man, you know? <laughs> so. I don't know, but um, that's that's one of the chief things that we actually look for mm-hmm. when we go into a house. We look at where the appliances are. We ask about the the age of the home, uh, if the wiring's been updated, if they have a breaker box, if that's mm-hmm. been updated since they bought the home. You know how well, our town it? home's a year old. Mm-hmm. We've been in it a, well, a year and a half. Well, I mean, you, as soon as it was built, we moved in. If you have the industrial power lines over it, though, it won't. I know. You, know. you know what I mean? And our walls are thin like that. You know, the Geico commercial where the woman walks in and she hears the two people talking from other sides? That's our place. I mean, there are things you can do. I remember those days. Uh, but uh, there are things you can do to actually uh, alleviate a lot of EMR. Okay. Um, you can get static reducing fabric. You know, you can actually do that. Uh, some people call it a grounding fabric, you know, different things like that. Um, similar to a blackout curtain, but this is specific for uh, static vibration. You can probably find it at Lowe's or, you know, different places. And just hang it over your breaker box. You don't even have to, like, glue it down or anything like that. Just... Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Things like that. Um, obviously making sure that you, what you have is up to date. Yeah. Make sure that your wiring is shielded, that it's insulated. Make sure that, uh, you know, none of your breakers are just flying out or whatever. You know, there's no... It's flying out. You probably... <laughs> there's no... Want to move. No <laughs> move. Right. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, you know, the thing... The, the house isn't haunted. Just breakers are flying out. <laughs> yeah. Just popping out of the wall. <laughs> Well, very cool. Well, you know what? I'm going to let y'all get back to doing your thing. Yes, and uh, we'll have to do this again because uh, it's very interesting. I'm very interested, but I'm very oh, yeah. not knowing. So not much, not right? know, you know? I mean, we're, so. Like I said, we're all that way, man. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's one of those things that you know what you go through, but you have to be shown what other people go through. Yeah. And, right there with you yeah 
Well, cool. Well, uh, Stephen and Brian has been awesome, man. I appreciate it. You and uh, y'all, uh, y'all have a good one. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Oh yeah. Well, hell yeah. That concludes this session of talk with uh, Spirit Mechanics, the Paranormal Busters. Um, <laughs> no, should I say Paranormal Cleansers? They go in and. Uh, cleanse the houses and do exorcisms and <laughs> exorcisions. I don't know what the, uh, what that damn word is. Anyway, I've got to learn more about it. But uh, yeah, I want to thank uh, Brian and Stephen for coming on the show. And uh, you can check them out at Spirit Mechanics, M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X, on Facebook. Definitely check them out. If you have something going on, give them a call, man. They'll come check it out for you. Uh, now, of course, they – and they do um, also do um, – uh, you know, hauntings, not hauntings, but I mean, uh, you know, they go in and, uh, um, do ghost hunts and stuff like that too. So, uh, you may want to hit them up, but, uh, definitely hit them up, uh, for, uh, and look them up on uh, Facebook and find out all they're doing. They're on uh, a TV show sometimes with, uh, um, gosh, I can't even remember her name now. They talked about it in the, uh, in the, um, podcast, but, uh, but yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Check back more often for that. Uh, you can check us out at uh, BlevinsNation.com, at Blevins Nation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that good stuff. And uh, you can check them out at SpiritMechanics.com. Uh, also, um, they uh, go to a uh, thing in Kentucky every month. It's a, um, it's a mystical market, and uh, they're there doing readings on people and, uh, you know, doing uh, doing their thing so uh yeah great stuff man so uh definitely check that out check out blevinsnation.com for all your podcast needs uh this is my first time to uh dive into the paranormal so uh definitely interesting i will do some more of that so uh everybody stick around and uh love peace and monkey grease and remember kids wherever you go there you are